folks, Dice Dice Kitty here. So, as most of you know, there are no new comic shipments coming out because the publishers are not printing books right now due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And so that means our one and only comic distributor, Diamond, cannot ship comics to us because there are no new comics to ship. So something I'm going to try to do weekly is a retro recap. And with Retro Recap, I'm going to do some of the uh, books that I've had in my collection for a while that I haven't read yet or some that I haven't read in a long time. And as well as my stuff, I want to read some of the things and show them to you uh, from the store. So store products, stuff that you can call up here and say, hey Jeff, I want that book that Kat was talking about this week. Uh, or, hey, I saw that book, but... I want some of the other ones that go along with it too. What, what have you got? So you can call and have curbside or you can come in and talk to Jeff and you know check out all the stuff he's got here. There's racks of books, there's boxes of books, there's tables of books, there's plenty of comics. So for the retro recap for this week, uh, today is April 9th I believe, I have got four books lined up to talk about and two of them, sorry, three of them are mine. And one is the stores. But I have other stuff that relates to some of these books to show you that the store has. So we're going to start off with my book, one of my books, uh, Star Trek Starfleet Academy number one. This is from December 1996. Uh, this is not the first Star Trek series that was ever printed, but this is the first one like this that I know of. And, uh, it's, it was a really fun read, especially for someone who was a huge fan of Nog from DS9. Uh, he's one of the main characters in here, and he's in a team of people uh, at Starfleet Academy. And uh, one of them is a relative of Decker's, so I can't remember if he's a son of Matt Decker or a nephew, but he is... It, it says it in here. I haven't read it in a couple of days, so I've forgotten. But he is uh, he is related to Decker. Let's see, son of Admiral, uh, descended from a long line of Deckers in Starfleet. Yeah, so he's uh, Nog has to deal with him, and and Decker's not so nice to him at first. And uh, there's an Andorian. She's really cool, and I like the uh, the Vulcan chick, who is maybe a Romulan. We don't know yet. Uh, well, won't know till I read the next issue anyway, or maybe a couple of issues later. But it talks about her being a Romulan spy, which could just be an implant or something like a memory. But it's uh, a false memory. But it's really cool, like. Nog get some stuff from uh, Quark, some holodeck stuff, holosuite stuff, and uh, he messes with the Academy's holo projector things and ends up creating a sentient life form. <laughs> Only Nog, right? So, uh, yeah, they, they make peace with the, uh, with the brand new sentient life form. And <laughs> See, I like issues like this where it's got fun stuff in it but it's also got a serious tone this feels a lot like tng mixed with ds9 so that's why i like it but it also it has the the problem of the week so the sentient ai which tried to kill him but <laughs> also it has an underlying ongoing story which is what it looks like is going to be the, uh, the, I can't remember her name, but the Romulan spy, the Vulcan. So this was cool. I have the full run of this, so I may do one, one each week until I'm done with it because this was fun. Really enjoyed that. Uh, as far as I know, the store doesn't have many Star Trek comics in stock. Uh, I think he's got like a, a number one from, that looks like Marvel up there. But, and he may have some in the back issue boxes too. But nothing like super new and I'm pretty sure he doesn't have any Starfleet Academy. 
but there are a handful of Star Trek books here. All right, so next, uh, from DC, this is the Wonder Woman Rebirth number one. This is not the one shot. I made a mistake and I read the one shot and then I brought this one with me today. So I had to read this one right before doing this video. But, um, so I really like how this starts because Wonder Woman is having some, not identity issues, not in this one, in the one shot she does. But like in this one, she she wants to know the truth. There, there's something going on. She can't quite put her finger on it. She knows something's off. Uh, we see Etta Candy and uh, Steve Trevor. You know, classic characters. Uh, Steve's in a war zone. And uh, having to fight off these dudes who somehow knew they were there, but they weren't supposed to know. It was supposed to be like a secret op and something went wrong somewhere. And uh, Steve's getting the blame for it because Wonder Woman also showed up at the same location. And he's like, hey, wasn't me. I ain't talked to her in forever. So, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember some of this. Because like I said, I just read this right before the video and it's all kind of a blur. But it really shows some of the issues of like wartime. For those that do not fight wars overseas or anything like that, you see some of the 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 traumas. I like it because it brings a little bit of realism to the fantasy part. But I have read these and it's been a long time since I read them and I don't remember what happens after this. So this is another series that I may continue to do weekly along with Starfleet Academy or I may stagger it. I'm not sure. But at the end of this one we see Cheetah and I don't remember what happens after this so I, I kind of want to go and read number three because with this series the odd numbers were one story arc so the lies is where it's in the odd numbers and then I think year one is in the even numbers I'm not sure why they did that but they did so if you're interested and want to see what is gonna happen next Jeff has the trade this is uh, the Wonder Woman the lies volume one trade paperback it has the rebirth issue the one shot and it also has numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11, I think. I was trying to find it, and I'm not seeing it now. Yeah, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. So it has pretty much like the whole story arc, I imagine, if not most of it. So this would be a good uh, volume to buy if you want to check out like where the new Wonder Woman stuff started with the rebirth stuff. Uh, I do like this one. This was a good read. So I definitely want to go read the rest of them now. All right, so we're going back like a little ways back. We're going back to an Edgar Rice Burroughs story. John Carter, Warlord of Mars. This is my copy of the number one issue. If you want to read a comic that is like a mini novel, this is the type of book you want to read. It's very detailed. The writing's really good. It's very descriptive. So there's, like, if you want to sit down and actually read, like read, read, this is what you want. Um, it's very dated because it is a lot older. I can't remember the date let's see 77 so it is extremely dated you've got you know the guy rushing to the aid of the damsel in distress but there's a lot more going on with this story it's kind of a, a sci-fi steampunk fantasy type story not so much steampunk as everything else and the only reason I say steampunk is because he's like a pirate running around with a sword fighting Martians 
uh, which is fantastic. But most of the book is him going to help Dejah Thoris, who is his queen. Uh, there's the alien dudes. <laughs> this is definitely a reader's copy, as you can see. It, it's creased and whatnot, but like I said, this is my copy, so it, it is a good reader's copy to have. But there's lots of action in this. There's spaceships, there's uh, dimensional travel. There's all kinds of cool stuff in this book, and I've got several issues of that, so I can't wait to read them. But if you want to check this out for yourself, Jeff has two copies in stock. So, might want to come up and see if you can get those or call him. Because uh, if you like sci-fi fantasy type stuff, that's definitely a book you want to check out. Alright, last book for my retro recap is, I don't know, let's see. No, not quite as old as, well, only by like two years. It's off by two years. So, 1979. We have Uncanny X-Men number 129. Now this belongs to the store. You can own this copy right here if you call the store. This book was probably the most fun I've had reading a superhero book in a long, long time. So, 1979, yes it's dated. Wolverine's sitting there reading a penthouse and puts it back on a magazine rack where there's a Playboy. Like, it's literally those magazines. Hilarious. I loved it. But also, uh, one of the characters, she has like, uh, I think it's Fantastic Four, Hulk, and something that looks like Spider-Man, like comic books laying on her floor. And she's got like a kiss poster on her wall. It's so fun to go back and look through some of these older books to see like the little Easter eggs that are put in there, whether intentional or unintentional. And it's, it's just, it was just absolutely fun to read. The story is amazing. Uh, it's written by Chris Claremont and John Byrne. So naturally it's amazing because I mean, they're, they're just great. Um, well written and, and drawn, I should say. But this is another one of those when you go back to the 70s, the comics from then, and I'm trying to handle this with extreme care, they are not, they're mini novels. This is, this is what I miss about comics. Most comics today are uh, more art than they are um, story. So, for example, I'm going to try to find one of the this is like the more wordier pages in this one versus, you know, this one here, which is not the wordiest page in, pages in this one here, but there, there's paragraphs. I love it. I sat here, was engrossed reading this. Now, I am not the biggest X-Men fan. There are certain characters that I like, and I love the X-Men animated series. Reading this made me feel like I was reading an episode of the animated series. So I think this is where they got their inspiration from, is from the this particular run of Uncanny X-Men. But it's got the Hellfire Club in it. Uh, the Dark Phoenix Saga starts in this. It's a first appearance of Kitty Pride and White Queen, Emma Frost. And uh, I want to say there was something else. Oh. Banshee. Uh, Banshee leaves the X-Men in this. So, um, and I think, I think it says it's in the Overstreet, it calls it the last Banshee. And I'm not sure if that means it's the last one in this volume. Because, I mean, he comes back later. You know, like much later. So, it, that's what it could be. This is volume one of Uncanny X-Men. But we see characters that are being used in current stuff now, like Lorna, Lorna Dane, she's in this briefly. Um, who else? Uh, there was somebody else I was like, hey, they're in a, they're in a current show. I don't remember who it was now. I should have made a note of it. But the, it was just really entertaining and fun to read. And when you're not reading the comic, some of these older books 
they have the most fun ads to look at. <laughs> That's a Star Wars toy ad. There's a, a radio controlled R2-D2. <laughs> but, uh, or like the, uh, the Mego elastic stuff. I mean, there, there's all kinds of fun stuff in this. But, again, it's dated. So there's a couple of things in there, like uh, there's a cigarette ad on the back of the penthouse magazine that Wolverine is reading, but like there's some comments made that like they would be considered offensive now. So you have to keep that in mind when you read these older books because that was a different time and people just spoke to each other differently. But um, I loved it. I did. I'm going to be honest, I did not think I was going to like this book. I picked it up, sat down to read it, and was like, this is great. How, how come I've never read the Uncanny X-Men? This was awesome. So, if you, wanna, if you want this book, you can call Jeff. He has it on the wall for sale. He also has a ton of Uncanny X-Men back here for sale. And I think there's some more somewhere in the store. Um, but yeah, it, fantastic book. I loved it. Writing was great. The art, classic art. So, I recommend if you don't get this copy, at least get like a trade or something that has it in there and read it for yourself. It's a really good read. So, all the books in my retro recap this, this week, I like all of them. Uh, my favorite though, out of all four that I read and I have to leave Star Trek out of it because I can't include this one so three out of the three that I read I'm gonna have to say my favorite was the Uncanny X-Men one because that was <laughs> that was great it was fantastic all right folks that's it for this week so catch me next week with uh, you know different books new topics maybe updates on what's going on Oh, and by the way, Jeff also has face mask for sale, uh, $7.99, right? Yep, $7.99 plus tax. Uh, they were made locally by uh, one of the customers of the store. So they are not like CDC face masks, but hey, they're cloth, rubber bands, they're face masks. So if you're looking for one, there's a whole bunch of different themes to it. There's superheroes and I think uh, some uh, like girly themed stuff. Like there might be a princess one, I think, or something. And there's kid sizes and adult sizes. So call the store if you're looking for a face mask. Or if you're looking for any of these uh, books I talked about. Like one of the John Carter books, Trade, or that first appearance of Kitty Pride. Fantastic book. Loved it. All right, folks, catch you all next week. Live long and prosper and glory for the empire. Kapla!